Hello everybody, I hope you're doing fantastically well. It is Connor with your post-match review. Leeds United stalemate at Burnley. 1-1, a point apiece, a point shared. Let me know what you think in the comment section below straight away. Make sure you like the video, as I just said to you seconds ago. Get your comments in. I want to hear your thoughts on that. This is a community. This is a forum, the One Leeds Forum. We should start hashtagging it on Twitter and all your social media sites. Check all the links down below as well. We've got the Football Content Awards that we're going for this year. Make sure you vote for One Leeds in the best new content creator and best club content creator, of course. All the links are below to my social media as well, where I talk about Leeds consistently. And let's get on with it, really. So, okay, overall, you know, if two o'clock kickoff, Turf Moor, referee Michael Oliver, we'll get on to him in just a little bit. 4-4-2 from Burnley, 3-3, 1-3 from Leeds United. Probably on, on the balance of things, I would say Charlie Taylor was Burnley's best player. Obviously, ex-Leeds, Dwight McNeil played really well as well. I thought that left-hand side really scuppered Leeds United. In terms of us, I would have probably said Pascal Strout was the best player on the pitch for us. I thought his percentages were very good. I thought in the air he was very good as well. Listen, overall, we come away with a point, don't we? We come away with a point. It's not the most disastrous result. If we'd have come away with no points, I would have been worried. You know, that would have been, you know, one point from nine in our opening games. I didn't think we were exceptionally good against Everton. I thought we were okay. I thought Everton really could have turned the screw and won that game. Two massive chances for them. Great saves, both saves by uh, Ilan Melia, of course. Today, we just don't see, it doesn't seem like we're clicking at this moment in time. Obviously, hammered on the first day by Manchester United. And it's just not Leeds at this moment in time. You know, we, we didn't go to Burnley that long ago with, with essentially the exact same team. And it just looked like a completely different side today. I thought Burnley looked quite strong. They didn't have many clear-cut chances. Listen, they didn't. But you always had a feeling that they were going to score. And I didn't think Leeds were going to score in that game. First get first half, I thought, you know, they controlled it probably overall. And when I say control, I don't mean in possession and all this sort of stuff. But I thought they looked like the, the team that was going to score. They, they were causing Leeds a lot of problems just in terms of physically. I think you saw that in the second half when, when Urente was taken off. Chris Wood, I thought, really had his number today. Pascal, I thought, was good. Liam's Liam Cooper's passing was all off in the first half. Ailing, I mean, we'll get on to Ailing in a bit, but I don't think he's had a great start to the season at all. And it was it was a backs to the wall job, I thought, for for large portions of that first half. Yeah, Leeds had the possession, but just passing in and amongst your your back three isn't going to get you isn't going to get you um, plaudits from me. Unfortunately, I don't think we were we were brave enough in the first half, to be quite honest with you. And yeah, let, let's get into the meat and grind of it anyway, shall we? Burnley overall thirty six percent possession, Leeds was sixty four total shots. Leeds had eleven. Burnley had twelve. Three on target from Burnley, two on target from Leeds. United so yeah I mean I just want to give full credit to Jamie Shackleton straight away uh, came on score uh, got an assist sorry I wish he'd have scored Bamford took that one off him but I thought Shaq was really bright when he came on almost gave us more on that right hand side I genuinely would like to if we ever deploy that formation again would like to see Luke Ayling as a right centre back that's what I called for this morning I wanted Pascal in there I wanted Diego in there and I wanted Ayling as a right centre back I think in that formation he's better I'm not 100% sure in that system when it's not the 4-1-4-1 obviously having a back four um, from the Leeds United end he's He's that good at this moment in time. I think he's really struggling to get to that top ember at where he was, you know, towards the back end of last season. I think Jamie Shackleton, especially in preseason, is really staking a claim to start in this Leeds United setup. I would, I would have gone with the back three. I'd have left Cooper out and I'd have put Shacks on that right hand side. That was my lineup beforehand. But yeah, what I liked about him when he came on and what the issue with with Leeds was for me was we were trying to pass it through the lines really and, and they were cutting it out in the first half. Brownhill was getting amongst it. Westwood was getting amongst it. They were cutting out our passing between the lines and, and I wanted Leeds to go along a bit more a bit more often to be quite honest with you because I thought 
Paddy, yes, he was isolated, but when it comes to the one-on-one -on -one battles, you saw it with Tarkowski, you saw it with Ben Mee, he was doing okay. But the issue was when he was ever getting a flick on or when he was ever trapping the ball down, there was nobody around him. You know, Rafa was completely absent. You look at that, you know, the goal that we scored when it was all down to Rafa and his X Factor. Aside from that, I thought Charlie Taylor pocketed him. I thought he was completely absent in the game. Reminded me of very much of the Luke Shaw-Rafinha battle where, where Rafinha wasn't really in the game, to be honest with you. Charlie... Taylor does have a good sort of one-on-one -on -one battle record with him. So, yeah, I, I, I thought I thought it was very difficult for Bamford to get in the game and that's why he looked isolated because there wasn't runners around him, really. Now, there's a difference between runners and just standing around him, which I thought Rodrigo was doing a lot of. I actually thought there's some really good touches from Rodrigo today, some really nice touches, some really nice passes here, there and everywhere, but he just wasn't dropping deep enough. And unfortunately, in that attacking midfield role like you saw with Roberts when he came on he was dropping deep to receive the ball gets it on the back foot and then runs we all know with Roberts that the end product is is very rarely there but dropping deep to get the ball really alleviates pressure on Leeds United and what it does is through the transitions it, it makes it more effective because there's an out ball for someone like Calvin Phillips Rodrigo there's a difference between having a runner off Patrick Bamford which Rodrigo wasn't and just standing next to Patrick Bamford, which you, you kept seeing with Rodrigo, even when we were defending defending, sorry. He was just he was he was following the centre back, following Ben Mee, then he was following Tarkowski, then he'd run across and try close down Charlie Taylor. I didn't understand I don't understand I don't think he understands where he's supposed to be. That is that is my assessment of Rodrigo in this role. I've said it several times and people come back to me with a thirty million pound tag. He needs to start showing it. 30 million quid. He's 30 years old now. We need to start seeing more from Rodrigo. We really do. Coming and showing for the ball a little bit more. Wanting the ball. I thought, as I've just said as a caveat at the start, I thought it was okay in terms of nice little touches, but we need to see more. You know, we need to still see more from a defensive capacity. Westwood and Brownhill were pretty much teaming up on Calvin Phillips today. I felt sorry for Calvin. He was in there by himself again, and we see that so frequently when Rodrigo's in there. That's why when you see Stuart Dallas, who has to go to left back, when you see click out the side, who I don't think is defensively great anyway. He's good at pressing, but I don't think on one-on-one -on -one battles he's that great anyway, because I don't think he's physically imposing enough. But when you see click isn't there, Dallas isn't there, you look and you think, oh, goodness me. So it's going to have to be KP and Rodrigo ahead of him, who... who doesn't run off Bamford enough, but stands next to Bamford when he's defending. And when he presses, he presses on the centre-backs instead of the midfield player who he should be pressing on. It doesn't make sense. And you'll see that with Burnley's movement, which was consistently through the middle. And you'll see that evidenced by the fact that Leeds created nothing in the middle. Nothing through the middle. Everything was funnelled out wide, which is what Burnley wanted anyway. But everything was funnelled out wide anyway because Rodrigo was giving us nothing centrally, and and that is a big big problem. So as I said, I thought he was I thought he was isolated, and I think this is this is fueling the calls again with Leeds United fans to buy another midfielder. Um, I, I I don't know what it's just so evident today that we need someone who's going to be able to take the mantle and and someone who wants the ball in that midfield, who's press resistant, who can get the ball out of his feet and really start distributing, and someone who really with the midfield that we have now he's going to be able to compete he's not just going to be a rotation option it's going to be this individual who can come in and really make a difference and as I said I, I thought Calvin was brilliant today I thought he really was and he was he was he was the midfield he was the midfield and and, and how often do we say that but I guess Two draws on a loss does feel so much better than a draw and two losses doesn't it and and, and that's that's the positive I think and that's what I'm trying to get with this. You know, we're going into an international break. At one point, it looked like Leeds were going to be on the on the wrong end of it. But as I continuously keep saying, we are not anywhere near our levels towards the back end of last year. I don't know if that's because of fans. I don't know if that's because of personnel. I don't know. What I did notice as well with the wing backs today, even a lot of people are going in on Luke Ayling, but Stuart Dallas, who's notoriously not a left back, but he's played there multiple times. There was no overlap. There is no overlap with Jack Harrison. There was several times where Jack Harrison was, you know, looking for that. And that's what I've been talking about with Junior Firpo in terms of him doing that and, and giving Harrison an option. Who used to do that all the time? Might not have defensively been the greatest, but I tell you what, Ezjan Alioski would have been perfect for Leeds today. And at Turf Moor last year, he ran riot. You know, defensively, we always talk about him, but... He knew when to win a free kick and that overlap gave Harrison so much more to go at on that left-hand side. And I feel like his bombardment today would have really helped Leeds. But Stuart Dallas, he's not natural 
on that left hand side and when he was doing the overlaps which were very very rare it was very easy to deal with with the front man on the post Tarkowski because that left footed delivery from Stuart Dallas isn't going to be any good because he's not a left footed player so yeah but yeah I mean there's there's so many things to talk about on, on that right hand side let's discuss this and this guys this is just a functional not not non-functional uh, description of the match should I say that right hand side, as I mentioned at the start with Luke Aylin, it's I don't know what's going on with Luke at the minute. His percentages are all off. There's just aimless balls going everywhere. And 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 I've talked today about how Rafinha was pocketed by Charlie Taylor, which I thought he was, apart from the last bit where he put him on his bum in a vital moment and, and Leeds obviously got the goal. But aside from that, he was relatively quiet. But I don't think he was helped by Luke Aylin at all. Once again, on that side, no overlaps. The balls into him were, were horrendous. And Charlie Taylor was on him instantaneously with the press. When the when 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 you're getting pressed by a left-back like that, the balls into you have got to be good. The balls over the top have got to be good. They've got to be efficient. They've got to be something that Rafa can get into. And, and Aylin was giving him absolutely no chance and no assistance or, or support, really. So... Yeah, and, and I think favouritism just has to go out the window for these sorts of things. You know, Luke Aileen didn't have a good game today. Now, if that standard of performance was on Tyler Roberts or a Liam Cooper or a Helder Costa, you know, we know Bill's got insurance. We know he's got credit in the bank so how, how, of how incredible he's been for Leeds United. But you, you've got to assess him on that performance and the performance so far this season if we can do it with all the others. You know, that's only fair. You know, meritocracy. One positive... We've come, uh, we've come from behind now twice, um, which is something that we did. We ever do that last season? You know, we never did that last season. We've now been behind three times, but we've come back twice, which is a big, big positive. It shows resilience, and, and that teams are scared of us, and in terms of uh, in terms of when they've scored, leads coming back. You know, and that's that's a big, big thing. The positive as well is that you know, if there was going to be, I, I I thought overall, if it was a boxing match, Burnley with a better team, and I wouldn't have complained if it was one nil Burnley. I thought if that is the result, that's the result. I didn't think Leeds were anywhere near their vintage self, but towards the end. They were retreating, and if any team was going to win it, just based on momentum, it was going to be Leeds. So it is, it's it's baffling, isn't it? But I thought the substitutions were were, were once again very good. From Bielsa, Shaq made the difference. I thought Roberts was good when he came on. I thought Roberts was good, um, and the attacking midfield role. I feel Roberts is better there. And I think we're all knowing that now. I think we're all realising that now with Rodrigo. I, I said it from the start and I used to get a dog's abuse for it because he's 30 million quid. But I think Roberts is better there than Rodrigo. And I'll, and I'll argue the toss with anyone there. I think Rodrigo technically is a better player. I think Rodrigo technically, as you saw with some of the touches, the lovely little layoffs, he's he's very, very good. He's a technically gifted footballer. You know, This guy was Spain's number nine, but he's Spain's number nine for a reason. He's a striker. He's got all the tendencies of a striker. But you know what? On the basis of that, you should be scoring against Crew, playing number nine. And if you're Spain's number nine, or you have been Spain's number nine, you should be putting in more of a performance against Crew. And this is why this is all on Rodrigo at this moment in time. There needs to be more shown from him on all fronts. But Roberts, I thought when he came on, he was tackling well. He was getting it on the back foot, as he has done with the last couple of games. And I, and I thought he was I thought he was decent. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section below uh, about that. But yeah, I think I think probably the best player in, in my personal opinion in in the game really was either Pascal or Shackleton when he came on. But it's not a great performance at the minute, isn't it? And I think that is the problem. But you know, I, I'm trying to be op optimistic, but I, I, I'm giving it as a caveat as I don't think Leeds have clicked yet. And um, that was a painful game to watch. It was a painful game because it was Leeds' basics. It was a painful game because I thought overall Burnley were probably the team that was going to score. Um, and we not long ago, we, we absolutely blew Burnley away. And I think that the lack of Matthias Click in that side is huge. And I think we all underestimate that. I think he's been one of the positives in pre-season. He was very good against Everton. What we need to see with Matias is more consistent performances over the, the end of last season. I thought he was done last season when he went through that 10-game period-ish where he was appalling, never in the game, defensively atrocious, and going forward just gave us nothing. I still think he needs more goals to his game. But at the start of the season, we saw it against Everton. That's back, that's Matias that we know. That's the click that we know. And I think we did miss him through the middle today. The creativity was non-existent. And I think in terms of a defensive capacity overall... He'd have been much more effective than Rodrigo. But, um, I mean, we've not even touched on the referee yet, have we? 
I mean, the referee, I mean, we should just call them GBHFC. I mean, you know what you're going to get with Burnley. That's the ultimate thing. I want to talk about the football, but you, I never come on here and talk about referee's decision. But the referees, the officials were a joke. In the first half, Tarkowski, when, I, when, he, when he led with his arm, he led with his elbow straight into the back of Bamford's head. On another day, that's a red card. Genuinely is. Led with his elbow. You look at the laws of the game. Easy could have been a red card. You know, Mike Dean, he's, he's on one of those days. He could be pulling out a red card there. And 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 I just I just thought overall the physicality that Burnley play with was unbelievable, and, and I couldn't actually believe half the instances to be quite honest with you. Um, but they got away with it, and if you get away with it, you're going to keep doing it, aren't you? You're going to keep doing it. And I thought the referee was was pretty atrocious today, uh, so I'm not going to. But I think overall, um, I think o- overall it's it's been a good outing from the referee so I'm not going to smash him even more but you guys know when I talk about five yard passing there's a big thing I focused on Ailing later on when Shackleton came on I thought it cleared up a little bit but the five yard passing was just atrocious today from Leeds United it was off uh, and you're not going to be able to build up your percentages you're not going to be able to build up through the transitions if that's uh if that's how you play, but I do think there is an argument that it was it, it was an undeserved point for Leeds United. You guys might disagree, um, but I am extremely happy with the point. But I think it also reinforces the fact that we need two eight Sam Phillips. Um, I, I love the O'Brien shout. I love his ability in that role. I love his I love his want for the ball. And you know, you even look at someone like a Rodrigo. Him and Rodrigo are different players, but Lewis O'Brien wants the ball in tight areas. Lewis O'Brien will get the ball on the back foot and move through the transitions. Lewis O'Brien will get the ball and distribute it quickly. Will distribute it effectively. He's going to be at a higher level, but it's someone who can be moulded. He's 22 years of age, and it just cripples me that we're haggling over four million if it's reported. You know, you're getting teams going and spending loads of money. I'm not asking to spend loads of money. I'm not at all. I don't want us to go and spend loads of money, but we're haggling over that amount for someone who could desperately help us in that role. I fear for us just going into these games so far, uh, into the games coming up, sorry, the next, what, 35 games with such a thin squad, you know, with such a thin squad. And you saw today when Rafa was out the game for the majority of it, Leeds really struggled creatively and anywhere in the midfield. As I've said before, it was Calvin in the midfield based um, there on himself, to be quite honest with you. But... um, but I'm really interested to hear what you say about Shackleton. Does he deserve to start now? He's, I think he's been phenomenal. And if we're playing in that role, and if it's on merit, which this whole Bielsa thing is, Shaq's has got to start. And Bill's got to fight for his place back at this moment in time because he's been poor for three games by his standard. And it's it's just fascinating to see, you know, if you, if you are pro Bill, which I am, um, then that's great. But you've got you've got to base it on performances. And and I think and I think it's. Uh, I think he's been very, very good so far, Shackleton. But I do, I, it's, it's slightly annoying that, that that I did feel that that was a game that we we're going to win, and it's because Burnley are going to be in the bottom six this year. So I think games like that we have to be winning, we have to be putting into in, in better performances, to be honest. But um, it's a free hit against Liverpool, and hopefully the international break is going to do as good. Um, I just, I just, I just don't think we. <laughs> We're having a dish right now, aren't we? But the, the, the chilli, the, the pepper, the little bit of sauce on top isn't there. We're having okay performances, but that spice that we had last year isn't there. Um, a lot of people laughed at me for predicting 13th. Too negative, too negative. We're going to finish 7th. Then we're going to finish 5th the year after. Then we're going to finish 3rd and then win the league. You're on about regression. That's not the case at all. 13th is an unbelievable finish for Leeds United and... I'd be really interested to see how many people are flip-flopping on their predictions now and now saying we're going to finish 18th and 19th and all this sort of stuff. But listen, a point, it is a point at the end of the day and I think it wasn't a good performance today, but it's a draw. We get a draw and we move on to Liverpool next. Let me know you guys think in the comment section below. We've talked about a lot today, haven't we? We've spoken about a lot, but I wanted to dissect a lot with you and I'm sure you guys will pull me up or disagree or agree, which is great, which is a, what, what I want in the forum below. It's been about 19, 20 minutes of me talking. Get your comments in. Like the video if you would, guys. I want to see, do you agree? Do you disagree? And of course, guys, I will see you in a bit. 